Why is this so hard? Honestly, this is the barrier that I have to overcome every time I do a video. It just sucks. <laughs> Hey babe, welcome back to my channel. This is Cola, if you don't know who I am. Babe, this is what happened in my Bali trip. After my team had left and Christine had left, I went to Ubud because I wanted to find or I wanted to have a spiritual experience as a business owner. So if you are a digital nomad and if you are a business owner, this one is for you. Okay, let's go. All right, let's start off with describing what happened after the team left. After the team left, I checked out of the Airbnb, our second Airbnb that we stayed at. If you want to know more about what I mean by that, you can look at or you can watch my previous videos. But I checked out of that Airbnb and then I took an Uber to Ubud, Bali. It was about a two hour drive. Actually, can you believe that? Actually, I couldn't believe it because I didn't know that things were that far away from each other in Bali. But we went from somewhere close to the beach to somewhere off in the mountains. I checked into a new hotel, which I was gonna stay in for three nights. And from there, I settled in, I got my workspace ready because as a digital business owner, my number one priority when I'm traveling and when I get settled into a new place is to set up a workspace because I want it to be easy and comfortable for me to just get up and be able to check my emails or check on my team and just be able to work in peace. So after that, I booked myself a day tour around Ubud. I booked a tour through Get Your Guide, which is an app that you can download if you're an iOS on Android. It's a pretty good app because you just input your location and it gives you options for activities around that area. So there was an option for a half day tour and a full day tour. I actually did the half day tour because it would be about, I think three to four hours to do multiple things. The first thing in that tour was actually a yoga class at this beautiful yoga studio on top of the mountains. And then after that, I was meant to go have lunch with a terrace view. They have this, I don't, I'm not sure if it's rice terraces or they're just terraces, but plantation terrace. So I went to that with my guide. And by the way, I thought there was gonna be a group guide to tour. It was not, it was a me tour. <laughs> I literally booked it expecting there was gonna be maybe like two, three other people. No, it was a private tour for me. And so it was just me and my Kuya guide, which was fun. You know, I think in, in the beginning, it was actually a bit like awkward because it was just me and a guy. Hi, welcome to Bali. Uh, my name is Radhi. <laughs> crazy. Actually, I think I remember booking for a female guide, but the next day it was a, a, a male guide. I don't know, it was just preference, but it ended up being such a cool private tour, half day tour for me. I stopped at the rice terrace for lunch. The Dalalang rice terrace. Bebe Timbungan. For me in Bali, this one is the best one. Yeah. After that, we went to a coffee bean. Oh, I forget the name of the coffee. It's like a cat coffee the poo oh yeah so basically i went to this other restaurant where they were making coffee from cat poo i know i say that and it sounds gross but the process in which they actually do it is very clean very hygienic the luwak nowadays the best place for the luwak is at the cage why when the luwak at night they're eating the farmer chicken yeah yeah the farmer will hunt the luwak. Oh. they walk me through the whole process the luwak's eat and when they eat it it goes through their digestive system and what happens is when they digest it it actually gets covered with something that creates this acid that makes this seed when they poop it it gets covered and it becomes a coffee like good for coffee bean basically or coffee bean but you're not eating the poop because what they do is they actually shred it becomes like a nut like texture and they break that nut and inside it is the coffee bean and so from there what they do is they roast that i actually got to taste it it tasted like coffee but there was a distinct taste to the coffee in terms of how strong it was it was a really strong particular taste this one tastes sweet you want to be like luak <laughs> ferment in my belly. 
<laughs> oh shit, yeah. I did a Bali swing. So you book it as a Bali swing. It's included in the tour. For some reason, I thought that this Bali swing was gonna be me on a swing taking photos. But oh boy, when we got to this location, so the swings were there and it was like facing the forest. And I was like, oh cool. Like, you know, you get to sit on the swing. The forest is the background, la yada yada yada. And then there was um, a section of this swing forest thing that's happening where you can put on a dress that you rent. But then if you don't want to rent a dress, you can just go straight to the swing. But before I got on the swing, they were like, what size are you? And I was like, I, I don't want the dress. And they go, no, 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 that's not for the dress. I was like, okay, I guess I'm small, whatever. They take out this harness and they were like, oh, here, like, you know, you can step on the harness now in time. I was like, step on the harness. I was like, okay, I guess they're that safe. Like they're that careful of people. I'm like, okay, cool. They're really good with like safety and stuff because I'm just gonna sit on the swing and take photos like so I put the harness on then they take me to the swing and it's really funny because it's really funny I say that now but in the moment I was so confused so they put this like carton in front of the swing and it was literally at the edge of the cliff and I'm like okay you want me to step on that and then get on the swing. Okay, cool, sure, sure, sure. So I step on it, I was holding them. There were like three people helping me to get on the swing. But next thing you know, they're like locking my harness on the swing. Okay, I guess this is the part where, you know, safety first, right? Very good, very good. They take that box away and two of them like kind of dissipate into the abyss. The Kuya, one of the Kuya people said, are you ready? And I was like, yeah, of course I'm ready. Like, okay, I'll just take the photo, right? And then next thing you know, behind me, there's this sensation of someone grabbing the harness and just kind of pulling you back. And then I literally, <gasps> but it was too late. It was too late. It was too late. Next thing I know, I was swinging and my feet were like up in the air. Oh my God. Remember that? Remember it was edge of a cliff? Yeah, man. I was swinging. I was swinging towards the forest, like big ass trees. And I was so afraid for my life. All I could do was hang tight on the swing and close my eyes and just feel the wind in my air, in my air, and <laughs> feel the wind in my hair. And all I could think was, Lord, please don't let me die. Yeah, after a few swings, the tour guide was like, open your eyes. And I was like, you open your eyes. I was really scared, dude. After a while, I think I got a bit more comfortable and I realized I wasn't gonna die. He just made me do Bali swing. Yay. I faced my fears of heights, guys. <laughs> that, was, that was incredible. Okay guys, I have to head out and go to dinner to Reina here in Paris. Reina is a Filipino fusion French restaurant that is owned by a very good friend, Erica Paredes. So if you're in Paris, make sure you visit. I gotta head out now because our booking is at 7.30 and it is currently 7.20. Bye! I'll continue this later.